Welcome to Your Gal Friday, a podcast about female leaders, innovators, and rule breakers. Each week, your hosts, Leah and Phoebe, will shine a spotlight on an amazing gal and talk about what we can all learn from her. Brought to you by Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. Welcome to Your Gal Friday. I am Dr. Leah Leach. And I'm Phoebe Freer. We are delighted to be back from break and dig into our next section, Funny Gals. In this prologue episode, we're going to let you know what three gals we picked, the method to our madness in choosing, and which gals were so close in making it on the list, as well as what we knew about these funny gals before we start heavily digging into our research. <laughs> oh, yeah. Funny Gals is... um. Going is actually really exciting. I was really nervous at first because comedy is not really my thing. My comedy and type of humor goes along with Despicable Me and Minions, like that. that it's childish, and you know, it. I like it. I, I I love that kind of humor, and so adult humor just it took me a long time to get to get into it. You know, so. At there first, you go. yeah. So at first, when we were like, "Oh, let's do funny gals," I'm like, "That's a great idea." I'm really scared because what if I don't like <laughs> know any of these people or I don't like them? But it turns out <laughs> like there was a lot more on our list that I knew and I loved than I realized. Like there, this right, this is right. a lot of fun just to try to figure out who we were gonna cover. So it's gonna be yeah. a lot of fun actually digging deeper. Plus, we we get uh, to spend some time basically just laughing. Yeah, exactly. We get to spend the <laughs> so, whole time laughing. So yeah. we're like, all right, cool. Throw in some jokes in there. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be fun. I, it's going to take a while to wipe the smile off my face, I have a feeling. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> so, Phoebe, not necessarily giving away our actual three picks. Right. What funny gals do you love? Well, um, on my list is actually um, Amy Schumer is the big, <laughs> most obvious one. She is gotcha. a, she's a comedian and an actress, and she wrote a, a book about her life, and she was just really real about it, and I loved it. Like, and um, she was actually very down to earth and very funny at the same time, and she actually gave me hope of like, oh. Okay, I just need to find different kinds of humor and different kinds of comedy. It's not like my fault that I don't think things are, or I don't think quote unquote comedy is funny. So right, right, like because exactly. I you need to find your humor exactly. Like I find things funny, but what society calls comedy, I have a hard time with. But Amy Schumer kind of opened the door for me. I was like, nice. oh, that makes a lot of sense now. Um, another one. I wanted to mention Anna Kendrick. She's not technically yes. a comedian, but she is so funny. She also wrote a book, and I read both of their books, and I almost was mm -hmm. like, can we just do story arcs about books I've read? But, like, that that's not how this... <laughs> no. I'll just write about it for Gal's Guide. It'll be okay. <laughs> but both of those books were so inspiring to me, and they were so funny, yeah. but they were, like, grounded and down-to-earth at the same time. So those are, like, the ones that stand out to me. Yeah. Oh, I love those. Yeah. I, I had... Um... I started a list mm -hmm. and I kind of had to like stop myself when I got to 20. Oh, geez. Because I, I think I could have kept going. Right. Like it was really rapid fire of just, you know, oh my gosh, these are funny gals that I love, that I love, that I love. Mm -hmm. And um, I what I realized is that uh, through my whole life, there has been a funny gal on TV or in film that, you know, that I've connected with or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that I found humor in. So it was really cool. So, I mean, who I love right now is Melissa McCarthy and Kate McKinnon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love I both of it. them. They're I dig it. so brave. I know. Melissa McCarthy, she's my doppelganger, right? Right. They, she is. <laughs> <laughs> she very much is. I've never um, said this to you, but it's completely true. Right. <laughs> it really is. It's quite surprising. You see a picture of me and Melissa <laughs> next to each other, and you're like, yeah, no, I got it. Sister from another mister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm not as funny as she is. I think she is hysterical. Um, but I would say that Kate McKinnon is my spirit animal. That's like, awesome. <laughs> I I get what she's trying to do, and I admire it, and I just want to be near it and get some power off of it, totally. basically. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
I mean, I grew up with Lucio Ball. Right. So I guess if my personal history with comedy uh, had a queen of comedy, it would be Lucio Ball. Oh, yeah. That makes uh, sense. And then I kind of thought about it like if she had a royal court, again, of my own personal loves and stuff like that, her royal court would probably be Madeline Kahn, Margaret Cho, Janine Garofalo, Carol Burnett. Catherine O'Hara, Whoopi Goldberg, and Ellen DeGeneres. That would be my my royal court, Absolutely. if you will. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. That completely makes sense. Wow. <laughs> a lot of it is, a lot of you them know, are 80s gals, you know too. Something, so it's just oh, like, yeah, yeah 80s and 90s, yeah. You know something? <laughs> I completely, like, I don't think I ever considered Whoopi Goldberg as a comedian, for some reason. Because nowadays, she doesn't do it as much. Right. But yeah, she was. But yeah. she was, like, I saw her as an actress, and I fell in love with her immediately. Like, everything she does mm. is, like, you know, I want to just bow to her because she's amazing. And, like, she could do no wrong, honestly. But I'm just, like, oh, I never, th- like, she wasn't even on my list because I never even thought about it until I, like, oh, was reading gotcha. it. I was, like, oh, that makes a lot more sense because she, <laughs> like, as a kid, I would, like, watch sister act hour i would watch whatever she's in and it's like no this is really funny and this is really awesome <laughs> like yeah i mean i first saw her as stand-up and then i used to watch comic relief which was uh billy crystal Whoopi girlberg and robin williams oh wow so my first thing was Whoopi's a comedian so when she did the color purple i'm like honey what are you doing you're a comedian this right. is really great <laughs> but there's no jokes here <laughs> right yeah that makes sense so uh, yeah i kind of i that was the thing it's like oh Whoopi, you're my comedian gal <laughs> right I and i it. will say i've discovered um i've discovered two other gals recently mm-hmm. so these aren't ones that like I grew up with, but these are ones that are like really, uh, you know, kind of pulling on me. I discovered Jean Carroll after watching uh, the Amazon special Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which was about stand up comedy in the 1950s. Nice. Um, Jean Carroll was on the circuit in the 1940s. And she is like rapid fire. Joke, 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 joke. Um, Here's one of my favorite jokes. She said, This lady said to me, gee, you've got a terrible cold. What are you doing? I said, I'm coughing. She said, why don't you take something for it? And I said, well, make me an offer. (laughs) (laughs) These are Jean Carroll jokes. I I love love Jean Carroll. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. This is going to be so much fun. She's one that I'm. I'm trying to absorb oh, more yeah. of Jean Carroll. I need to into go watch comedy now. Like I need to. Go, oh my yes. gosh! I have so much research to do. <laughs> oh no! So much research. Um, I know. Tis the show. <laughs> it is <laughs> another one that I really. I just have to mention that is new to me mm-hmm. is uh, Mom's Mabley. So yes. Mom's Mabley, I. Yeah, so I was introduced to her. I watched a CNN special called The History of Comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, And they talked briefly about moms, ever so briefly, that I had to look her up. Like, I just had to know more about this fantastic woman. Now, she is uh, too saucy for us to be able to cover on this podcast and give her the true credit of her nature is due. Um, Her childhood was harder than hard. I mean, a lot of her childhood we can't even talk about on the show. Right. My goodness. But she was one of the very earliest female stand-up comedy uh, comedians. And I'm, I really almost hesitate to say she was the first. It's like, oh, it's hard because there was not a lot of record of this. But she's very close to the first. What's amazing about that is that she was black and she was gay. Ooh. And that is what makes it even more amazing yeah. of being the first. Um, but she was also very saucy, and so is her comedy. Uh, now, the irony of Moms is that she didn't make her big break until the 1970s when she started dressing up as an old lady and making jokes about going after young men. <laughs> <laughs> I so love the that. <laughs> irony of this black gay woman dressing up as an old age black woman going after young men it's just this layered contradiction of humor and wit and i dig her so mom's mabley i had to give a shout out to her absolutely (laughs) so yes but we did an online poll didn't we we? did yes so we did an online poll and I wasn't sure what I was expecting, but we actually got quite a bit of results. Um, Yeah, we we did. We have three gals, of course, in each story arc. We had two kind of decided, and we needed Mm -hmm. a third. 
Uh, we didn't tell them what our two were, um, but we wanted to see what other people had because there's just so many. There's so many names. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe somebody would think of somebody we hadn't thought of and right. be like, oh, no, no, no. We got to rework the list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we started out with responses from Twitter from two different people, and they suggested, of course, Lucille Ball, um, Carol Burnett, LaWanda Page, um, Marla Gibbs, Elaine Stretch, and Bette Midler. So these are all already a bunch of names, but it didn't stop there. We later had 20 different funny ladies, and then it ended up with almost 30 gals. And they were suggested from lots of people, so maybe we should do polls more often because that was pretty cool. That was very cool. Was awesome. I love the results of that. <laughs> so included in the results were Mary Tyler Moore, Elaine May, Shirley McLean, Betty White, um, Joanne Worley, um, Joan Rivers, Whoopi Goldberg, of course, Keely Smith, Lorraine Newman, um, Madeline Kahn, Phyllis Diller, Catherine O'Hara. Uh, and these were all just from Facebook. These suggestions just came pouring in and they... These ladies are not just comedians. They're SNL actresses. Mm-hmm. They're, um, they've acted in movies. They're um, singers and songwriters. And they're, they're all these different things, but they're comedians. They come together. And, of course, Ellen DeGeneres and all of these, just all of these ladies were suggested. It was really, really cool to see the, the viewer's response. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Would you like to know what our top five were? I do. What are our top five? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'll start at the bottom. So number five, we had a big tie uh, for number five, but the tie was between Betty White, Elaine May, Whoopi Goldberg, Goldie Hawn, and Phyllis Diller. Mm-hmm. That was the tie for number five. Perfect. Uh, number four was Gilda Ratner, Joan Rivers, Lucille Ball, and Bette Midler. Wow, we had so and many then ties. the ties stop. I know, right? Whoa, exactly. they stop. <laughs> what happened? I know. So then number three was Mary Tyler Moore. Wow. And number two was Lily Tomlin. Wow. And number one of our online poll was Carol Burnett. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> So thank you, everybody, for putting in your picks. We really appreciate it. We really, really do. (laughs) And I would love to tell you who we actually, actually decided on. But I want Leah here to explain a brief history of comedy first. Yeah, we thought that this would kind of make sense in the prologue uh, of comedy. Because it also, it ties into who we picked and kind of to a certain extent why we picked who we picked. Yeah, exactly. So the brief, ever so brief history of comedy. Uh, The very first records of comedy came in the form of a playwright in 425 BC. It has been around for a very long time. So astrophanes of ancient Greek theater had 11 comedies that have survived throughout the ages. A hundred years later, even Aristotle wrote some comedy but neither of these gentlemen treated the craft of comedy as a career and they also didn't treat it as a real genre either so we have to jump ahead to shakespearean comedy now shakespearean comedy actually means something different than we think of comedy Mm -hmm. it just means a happy ending right (laughs) it doesn't mean belly laughs it means it's light-hearted fun that won't make you cry (laughs) But around that time, Punch and Judy was an Italian puppet theater, and it was making its way to England, and Punch and Judy was all about the laughs. Now, Mr. Punch carries a large stick, and he slaps the other characters. You know, a slapstick. Yeah, that's where that term came from. Slapstick came from Punch and Judy around the 16th century. Yeah. (laughs) And what's interesting is that Punch and Judy, it still exists today. There are still Punch and Judy puppet shows that are happening today. That's awesome. It's quite amazing. That's so great. (laughs) Now, comedians, as we know them, stand-up comedians, sketch comedians, that started around the 1850s in England. And they were paired with music hall shows, and a lot of them did sketches. American Vaudeville started 30 years later, and it was a variety of entertainment. So it included comedians. But it also had strong men, magicians, and trained animals. So it was kind of a circus. 
that <laughs> was a little bit of a mix. I, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> now, touring companies like Vaudeville, most times they would provide a decent living for a career as a comedian. And women were on the bill, too. I found a poster from 1902 featuring Sarah Midgley and Gertie Carlisle presenting a sketch after school and, quote, they are a knockout. <laughs> nice. So women were right there on the bill. But things really changed for comedians, especially female comedians in the 20th century with radio, TV, and film. Mm -hmm. So these three inventions made comedians household names. And it wasn't until that 1900s where there was a career aspiration to make people laugh for money. So we wow. really kind of focused on the 1900s because that's really the modern uh, comedy invention totally. of having a career as it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the history of comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. So do you want to tell the good people? I who do. Who are the three picks? So, drum roll, please. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So our first one is Lucille Ball. Because I love Lucy. <laughs> Yay! I love Lucy, too. I love Lucy. <laughs> Our second pick is Lily Tomlin. Yay! And she covered... And that's the truth. And that's the truth. So Lucille Ball <laughs> covers the... You said the 50s? Yeah, the 1950s. 1950s. Lily Tomlin will cover the 70s because this is like where mm -hmm. the peaks of their careers hit. And then our last mm -hmm. one, drumroll... Jamroll is Ellen DeGeneres. Yay! Yay! And she covers, of course, the 90s through now. So that's pretty cool. And Lily Tomlin actually yeah. covers now, too. And yeah, we'll get more into that. But I'm really excited. Um, the, these gals, it was it was hard to narrow it down, but it was pretty funny. Me it was. And, yeah. But me and Leah both had, we both had, like, strong opinions on one so that worked out. We were like, right. I want this one. And you're like, I right. want this one. And I'm like, all right, we can need a third. <laughs> exactly. Yes. But yeah, we were both like equally. I was like, I want this one. And you're like, I want that one too. Okay. Well, which one do you want? <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because once uh, once you put your hat in the ring of uh, of who you wanted, I was like, all right, who would I feel bad that we didn't cover? Like, totally. who would I feel is missing? Yeah. Um, and so then I throw mine in. And then it's like, all right, let's ask the people. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and Lily Tomlin. To figure out the third. And Lily Tomlin was our third that we were figuring out. And she was second in our top five. Um, and we want to tell them why we picked her or yeah because i mean i can tell my deciding factor sure, yeah. honestly and then we had talked about it too yeah um and if you have anything to add to it as well i the deciding factor for me with lily over carol was that lily did tv movie theater and stand-up yeah she did a lot of variation on comedy and then, of course, she has a show right now on she Netflix. She does, right now. And it's awesome. And I've watched all of it that they've had. And I think they're See? still filming. Oh, my gosh. Like, honestly, I didn't really know that. Like, I'm really bad with actors' names and actresses' names. Mm -hmm. But then I, like, looked her up. I'm like, wait, I know her. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> She's Frankie. <laughs> I've, I've been watching her show. I've been watching her. I love her. She's my favorite character. <laughs> like, So I'm actually, I'm really excited. Um, this is my first time with a story arc that I actually know a bit about each person we're covering. So oh, it's like. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I mean, the Hamilton ones, I mean, and the Hidden Figure ones, they're, I knew them because of the shows. But that I didn't know about right. the real people very much. But these ones I know about the real yeah. people at least a little bit. And I'm pretty excited. Right. I have like a baseline this time. <laughs> I know, right? It's oh, fantastic. It's fun. It is. And I'm like, oh, I know this about this person and this about this person. <laughs> That's so great. Exactly. Well, actually, that's a really good segue to uh, what we already knew about these gals. Oh, yeah. Let's hit them one by one. So what did you already know going in before we've started our hardcore research mm -hmm. on Lucille Ball? We'll hit Lucy first. Well, Lucy, I knew her because of I Love Lucy, of course. And then um, I didn't watch the show very much, but I've, of course, heard about it and seen clips and different things and then I actually visited Paramount Studios in 2012 
And oh, very cool. Yeah, and they were like, because there's a big Lucy. Stuff oh there, yeah. yeah, and they were like, so this is where she used to live, and this is where they she started this daycare, and it was really cool. I was like, oh man, I really love this Lucy person, and like, and I mm-hmm. I learned more about her life just by touring the studio because her. Her studio life and her home life were like really integrated. So right. you have like to learn anything about her studio life, you have to learn about her her real life. So mm-hmm. just by default, I learned more about her just b- by being there, which was really cool. For me, when it comes to Lucy, I would say I know a little bit more than the average bear mm-hmm. um, about Lucy. I do know how I Love Lucy got started. I do know that Desi Arnaz was sometimes a handfall. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know that because of her, we have Star Trek. That is a fantastic yeah, story that's when right. we get into yeah. it. Um, and I also love it when she would be asked if her red hair was really hers. She would always say, it better be. I paid for it. And <laughs> I use that line every time I dye my hair because of Lucy. That's amazing. <laughs> So that is my Lucy knowledge right there. That is amazing. (laughs) We'll have to count how many times we say, I love Lucy while while we're doing the episode. And not necessarily in reference to the show, just how much we love Lucy. Right, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So, all right. So Lily Tomlin. Lily Tomlin. You know from Gracie and Frankie, but what else did you know about her going in? Well, I knew her from Grace and Frankie and then... My roommate actually knew her from nine to five, I believe it was. Yeah, and so oh, he yeah, kept classic. Te- yeah, so he kept telling me about her and that. And then, I mean, I'm sure I've seen her in other things, but I like didn't realize she was a comedian. But when I was watching Grace and Frankie, like it's a sick, it's a Netflix sitcom, mm-hmm. so like it's supposed to be funny. But she, her character is the funniest one, and it's just like she's the hippie chick, the hippie grandma. You yep. know, she's like classic, and it's fantastic. And that rhymed. My bad, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but I mean, I think Grace and Frankie's on its like it just had three seasons right now, and I know this sounds weird, but like I feel like if you watch enough of an actor or an actress um you watch enough content you kind of get to know them as a person too like you're not like oh Oh, she's totally frankie no she's you can see her personality coming through so with her and her character i was just like man she'd be a really cool person to hang around with (laughs) she'd be really cool (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and luckily while we're researching we always kind of feel like we're hanging out with them oh, to a certain extent that is so, so. true <laughs> it's fun it is <laughs> so what about you uh i loved lily tomlin's characters on laughing that's where that's where i fell in love with her that's where i first saw her. uh her edith ann with you know and that's the truth uh, was so cute, the little five-year-old character that she played. Um, Ernestine, the telephone operator with her snort, always cracked me up. Mm-hmm. I love that one. Um, nine to five, I, I totally, nine to five was my jam. I've been meaning to rewatch it. I kind of wonder how it holds up today. Yeah, I, and I need to <laughs> I'm watch I'm really it worried, yeah. but it, it could still be pretty good um, because it was a different time with with sexual harassment and abuse. Yeah, different time. well, there's, there's that. <laughs> I do do remember watching uh, the incredible shrinking woman over and over again, mm. and then having nightmares about it. Oh, There's no. a scene where she shrinks down and she almost gets stuck in the garbage disposal. Like I would have nightmares that oh, I was no. shrunk down, <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't Lily Tomlin's fault. It's just for some odd reason it really connected with my imagination, right? Uh, for that one, so yeah. Um, so also Lily's been constantly working. She's oh, been yeah. in a lot of TV, stage, and theater, and movies. She's got here bits here and there. So it's one of those things where um, I haven't seen Gracie and Frankie yet. I know that I really, really need to, uh, but I just, I love that Lily's kind of always been around. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? All my life. It's like, oh, there's Lily. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a touchstone sort of thing. Yeah. So, uh, but I don't know much about her, about right, her life, yeah. about how she got started. So I'm super intrigued oh, to yeah. find out how she got on this road and stayed on this road, which yeah, is pretty cool. It is. Yes. So what about Ellen? I know the standard bits that if you know Ellen DeGeneres' name, 
Like, that's that's what you know. So I know her because of her talk show. Now, I'm not a big person for talk shows either. But I watch, like, I will binge watch Ellen all the time. Like, I mean, if if given the chance, I will binge watch Ellen. I usually try not to because it will suck my whole day. But it's right. like <laughs> just the way she interacts with people and the way she tells about world events like talk shows do. Yeah. But it's like in a relatable way and in like a uplifting way instead of like, a right. oh, no, our world is going to burn and like, oh, no, everything's going to crap. Well, Ellen's just like, well, yeah, this is bad, but let me show you this funny video of a panda or like let me show you this funny video of my friend going shopping and doing something silly and now here's a kid that we're supporting who ha- who is going through a rough time and it's like wait what right. <laughs> what's happening right now she's like a, a ray of hope but also a reality check at the same time exactly <laughs> it's like wow mm-hmm. like i i strongly feel like we all need to be more like ellen like she's Right. She knows what she's doing. Like she she gives me faith in humanity again because it's like okay, she's a, she's acknowledging what's happening, but mm-hmm. she's not wallowing in front of us. She's she's also acknowledging the good stuff, which is right. refreshing. Yeah. I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I've been I've been following Ellen's career since her very early stand up days in the eighties. Uh, so something that will probably come out in every single one of these episodes. My brother and I were so into stand up in the eighties and nineties. We primarily from our blockbuster would rent stand ups more than movies. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so we watched a lot of them, uh, a lot of them. And we, um, the only cable channel that we had was HBO. So the HBO, like, uh, um, you know, improv specials and the comedy specials, Mm -hmm. we would, like, set the VCR to record those when they came on past bedtime so that we could watch the stand-up specials. We were kind of obsessed with it. Also, I bought, not only did I watch all of Ellen's specials, uh, obviously, I also bought her book that came out in 1995 uh, which is my point and I do have one it was a hilarious book it was the first book I would say written by a comedian or meant to be funny like I read books that were funny but you know they weren't like this is going to be like a stand-up show but you're reading it instead Mm I had never read one before so I read hers and then I got Paul Reiser's and then I just kept going and I'm like I'm going to just start reading from comedians now because this is just fun totally (laughs) Dave Barry was another one I got into of just reading uh comedians I watched the Ellen show her first sitcom show I watched watched it all the way through. I was there for the coming out episode. I stayed all the way until that show was canceled. And I really, really worried. I remember this time very much that Ellen was going to be blacklisted and that she was going to disappear, that we weren't going to have any more Ellen in our lives. But somehow she has the most amazing comeback story, I think, uh, in modern history. And I love that she came back. I love how she came back. Um, and I'm just I'm really excited about talking about that part in her life because I think it's really important to showcase where she is today because of it. And also she's Dory. She's Dory. She's Dory. <laughs> so true. She's Dory. <laughs> right? <laughs> So many, many a times, it's kind of like, just keep swimming, just, just keep, keep swimming. swimming, like, yeah. <laughs> Three, P, Sherman, Wallaby Way, Sydney, something like that. Exactly. <laughs> P, Sherman, Wallaby Way, Sydney. <laughs> I used to repeat that all the time after watching Finding Nemo. I was just like, P, Sherman, Wallaby Way, Sydney. And I would just like <laughs> say it over and over all day and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I, Dory's hey. got to remember. <laughs> I know. Is it terrible that mine used to be fish or friends, not food? Not that food. was the one that I would oh, keep yeah. repeating. Oh, we would. <laughs> Me and my brother would do that one all the time, and then it would be like an inside joke. And then because we right. would, we would like 
ch- warp our voices too and be like fish are friends <laughs> not food and then people be like what is happening <laughs> or like shark bait Nemo yeah. too many yeah, times we have yeah. oh shark bait boo ha ha every yeah. time every time Any opportunity i get a oh, chance yeah. to do that one. <laughs> oh yeah and I, I will do that one just in a normal conversation but without warping my voice and people just like yep. really quickly whip their head towards me are like what is happening <laughs> uh my my daughter just bought a stuffed animal of a shark and she made the mistake of asking me what its name should be and i'm like obviously it's shark bait boo ha ha i right. mean why would you name it anything else except for okay number two the answer is bruce because that's the name of the shark in jaws oh, these yeah. are your only two options yeah I see. exactly so <laughs> <laughs> but its name is sharknado all right oh shoot <laughs> it's a different generation baby different for generation. Oh, <laughs> i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> I know, right? Disappointed might be the word. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a cute name for a stuffed animal shark as well. I'll just have to get my own and name it Sharpe Booha. <laughs> yeah, well, that works. <laughs> well, what are you hoping to learn from these three gals? Ooh. Either either individually or kind of like overall? Um, collectively, I'm hoping to learn like how they got to the comedy part of their lives. Like how Right. Because yeah. you know, They've gone through a lot because they talk through mm. a lot. Like they talk about really heavy stuff. So I'm sometimes I'm like, I can't see the comedy in life. Like sometimes it's just really hard. And I'm like, okay, how can I learn how they found the comedy? And how like I, I wouldn't call myself a comedian, but I say really silly, really random stuff to make people laugh. And it's just yeah, well, it's uplifting to yourself and to others. So exactly. You're kind of, you know what I mean? How do I lift the mood a little bit? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm curious to see how they got to that point and how they stay in that mindset of we can, like, because sometimes it takes things too seriously or whatever, but comedy, like, lightens that mood. I'm like, okay, how do you get in that mindset? How do you stay there? Like, I'm just interested in that whole process. And then. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm really curious about like the individual lives. I know that's, you know, the whole point of this show. But honestly, like each each gal here has gone through a lot of different things, and I'm really curious to mm-hmm. to see how far that goes. Yeah, I'm actually I'm right there with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things that I admire about comedy like a common theme that I've seen throughout comedy is that it comes from a place of great hurt Mm -hmm. and you have to have, you don't have to have it, but having that hurt brings the lightness almost, you know, more important. You know what I mean? You feel like I have to bring this joy to myself and to others because I know what it's like in the dark and light. So, um, so I want, I want to know, you know, what that is, because I don't think it needs to be from terrible suffering comes the greatest of comedy. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't think it needs to be a full reversal. So I think that will be quite interesting to see. Um, and it's not that I want it to see a great hurt in these oh, gals. No, it's exactly. not that. I'm not a masochist. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I just want to see how comedy got them through it. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. How did comedy save them in one way or another as a career or as, you know, as their life? You know, right. as something that's so passionate to them. Um, you know, I, I want to see how it helped them. And I also want to see how, um, adversity was turned into strength because I think we're going to see that in different ways with all three of these gals. Oh yeah. Um, because I think they did it and it wasn't that they took something that was hard for them and made it funny. I think they made themselves stronger and more determined to succeed. Um, and I think that will be a fantastic universal lesson to learn too. So totally. But I also like specifically, I do want to learn more about the Lucy Desi dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've always been kind of more curious oh, about yeah. that. Me of too. Who was like, in charge of what? How did the power struggle kind of, you know? Yeah, what what actually <laughs> happened? Because there's lots of, you know, right. folklore stories. It's like, oh, I, right. I, I, I learned I a about lot of that different at the bits. studio. I'm like, yeah, like, I'm curious mm. what they told me at the studio, it, like, how much was true, you know? And I've always been right. ready to look it up, you know? But So this mm-hmm. is a great excuse to do that. Yeah. When it comes to Lily, um, I 
I'm curious to know how her politics helped and hurt her career. Because in the 70s, it was impossible to not talk about politics. There was the Vietnam War. There was the, uh, you know, the women's movement that was happening with the Equal Rights Amendment. So I, I would I'm very curious on how that helped and hurt because, you know. Um, I think comedians and politics, they do go hand in hand. Um, Mm -hmm. and I also, I really want to learn how Ellen didn't shame spiral and instead decided to become an inspiration. I, I need to know that. I need to know that too. (laughs) Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping to learn. (laughs) I love it. Going into these glorious episodes. (laughs) Did you have any final thoughts? Um, I I know we cover um, gals, but I just wanted to give out give a shout out to Robin Williams because uh, yes. he impacted my life so much, and he's a comedian, of course. It it means a lot to me, you know. Comedians Im- impact our lives, like comedy impacts our lives, and um, he impacted mine. So I guess that's all I wanted to say. Oh yeah, you know, I'm actually I'm right there with you because like my. Probably what drove my brother and I into uh, stand-up comedy specifically Mm -hmm. and trying to watch all of them was Robin Williams. Absolutely. He was kind of, he was a force of nature. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you wanted to be around it. You wanted to be surrounded by that pure genius madcap. This is funny. This is funny. This is funny. This isn't funny. Wait a second. I'm going to go another direction and this will be funny. And I think because he had this bubble of um, life is funny everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. It was, okay, let's hear what other voices were. So Robin very much was what got my brother and I um, a a love of comedy and to explore all the different facets of it. That's awesome. (laughs) So, yes. So big shout out to Robin. I do. I do love him and miss him very, very much. Me too. (laughs) Yes. Well, that wraps it up for us today. But there are loads more laughs and quite possibly some heartbreak coming up. So dust off that vitamin of Vegemint, because next week we're going to share the love of Lucille Ball. For more information about this week's gal or to check out our previous episodes, visit galsguide.org. To support the show, visit the Gals Guide Patreon page. We love our patrons and offer exclusive perks and behind the scenes access for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much for subscribing to Your Gal Friday.